this application is unusual in as much as it's been before us before and we refused it. And there was quite some generous offers about the Wakefield provision, as I remember at the previous application. Um, we in our wisdom refused it and the inspector has been on site and has accepted the principle of the outline uh, planning and the housing will go there. Not only have they accepted the principle of housing going there, they've accepted the principle of numbers in that facility because I've, again, using my memory, the outline application was for more properties that have actually been fitted onto the site. I very, very well take on the point uh, Councillor Norbury takes on behalf of the residents about the density issue. Um, you can see fairly large pots and these are much smaller pots. However, going back to the appeal decision, it was very difficult to construct a reason for refusal given the previous uh, appeal decision. Not only that, if we did go to lower density, we would have far more valuable properties and there would be no, or if any, affordable properties. This has met, which has been a great public contention for this committee, has met the demand for affordable housing. Albeit only six, six affordable houses does add um, to, to the total. And again, it's uh, you know, the more general picture about these sites becoming available are referred to as windfall sites. I think someone mentioned that on Monday night like that we should take a really optimistic and positive approach about windfall sites. Therefore, we can then take pressure off green belts and other areas. Previous, possible the previous application is, is, is a case in point. Uh, having a school close to you, a good school close to you, is either if a curse or a blessing. If you've got children, it's a blessing. If you're worried about traffic problems at peak times, it can become a curse. But this is a very difficult application. My view is that we would look rather foolish having lost it on appeal. <coughs> That would develop. This seems to be a reasonable development given all the other demands we put on developers to, to come up with a reasonable application. Um, so, my view again is that given its previous planning history, refusal would be mocked. In fact, the, the inspector would probably scratch his head and say, What are those, those people up to? Um, to be frankly honest, because the, the development, um, you know. We knew it would have to be an access to that site. If you look at it, where it's going to come from, the logic would be it would be in Glenhaven Road. Uh, I think the inspector would have taken all that on board and seen the site. And, and <coughs> another inspector is very unlikely to go against another a, a previous inspector's view of, of, in principle, allowing development on that site. So the, the other thing I would reassure residents of is this is far better being a cul-de-sac than a through road. The beauty of cul de sacs, and we've seen developments in my own world where people think, oh, it's going to be awful. People living in a cul de sac know the cul de sac. The majority of traffic movements will be people who live there and know the area and will develop a pattern of movement and be aware of any risks and hazards. Okay, there will be delivery vehicles and things like that, but in general, the traffic movements created by 28 properties is not as massive, I think. Uh, there was a quote on the, on, on the site was about the actual numbers. And my view is, if I could come up with a reasonable reason for refusal, which I don't think anyone could, it would still have that spectre of the previous plan inspector's decision hanging over it. And I think that it would be washed away by that previous decision. That's my view, and, and some of the other things I've picked up over the years. Thank you, Steve. David? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I must say I've got a lot of sympathy with what has been said. Uh, my first reaction, three simple points really. I'm looking at the site, first of all. I thought that it was an overdevelopment, an overintensification of the site. That was my first uh, reaction. I thought the houses were totally out of character with what is already there. And I have a lot of sympathy with what the Ward Council has said in terms of uh, the changing character of the area. The third thing was, and again endorsing uh, Councillor Norbury's comments, the word greed does come to mind because it looks as though somebody has tried to cram as many houses onto that site as possible. I'd like a, a clarification on that point from the officers actually. Uh, Steve has mentioned the fact that the previous outline planning application had a number on it. I gather there was some confusion over that. In fact, the previous application did not have a number. It was put forward. Can you just clarify that point before I continue, please? Uh, 
yes, it, the previous application was an outline that was an indicative layout that, that, that showed 32 houses on the site. But yes, there was no actual number as part of the description. Right, so, so that... So that clarifies that position for us, thank you for doing that. But the final point, very quickly, is that if you're going to create a development like this, as I have done in the past, I would far rather have seen that both those houses demolished at the entrance, provide a nice wide entry and give it some sort of character and meaning with a little bit of a landscaped uh, area leading into it to give it a sort of identity of its own, to try and remove just one house and put a very narrow access to me instead of mealy mouthed and greedy. But as has been said, I'm not sure that we could base any sort of objection to the development um, on those points that I have made. I'm just very sad and disappointed that the developers can't come up with something more suitable and more in keeping with what clearly the residents would like to see. And that I find is very, very disappointing. That's really all I can say on the subject, but I'm sad that it looks as though we're going to be unable to find sufficient grounds to uh, make sure this doesn't uh, go ahead, particularly in view of the previous inspectors that contribute based on the previous refusal that we moved. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David. Stuart? Yeah, I'm grateful to see you and Dave for clarifying the, the issue of density um, uh, question. I was going to ask whether there was an indicative number attached to the outline, and, and that's, that's been made clear. Um, to the second point that's been raised, I, I agree with, with what's been said in, in, in terms of you know, the, the, the access. If you're going to demolish the, the house to make the access, probably best left demolished. Because actually now the, 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 the dwelling that's, that's um, indicated as 00, zero which would seem to be the new 81, will be out of character with the existing street scene. Um, but I, I, as colleagues have said, probably not to the extent of one wish, wish, to wish, wish, wish to risk one's arm at another deal. The concern that I had um, with this, uh, however, was the objection from Sports England um, and its previous use of the playing field. Um, and I appreciate some of those issues have been um, aired with the inspector in the previous um, appeal. Since the appeal, however, we have adopted uh, our today play and pitch strategy, which mentions <coughs> by name the Glenhaven um, site. And the strategy specifically says uh, that if disposal of the site is inevitable, it must meet the requirements of the second criteria of paragraph 74 of the National Climate Policy Framework, which requires replacement provision of an equivalent or better co uh, quality and quality in a suitable uh, location. And as members will be aware, the uh, Glenavon Low playing field was utilised by Glenavon Junior Football uh, Club, who have relocated down to the Glen and Solid uh, Rack. And that also is mentioned in the playing pitch strategy um, with a number of um, uh, requirements, if you like, to bring those pitches up to, uh, to a decent uh, standards will strike me as we have an evidence base now that suggests uh, that if we are to dispose of former playing fields, we ought to be looking as part of this policy for a contribution to bring the new playing fields um, up to uh, scratch. Um, I know what people are going to say to me, they're going to say that the inspector has, uh, uh, has considered that. The inspector hasn't really considered that because he didn't have the opportunity to consider the playing pitch strategy. It was only adopted on the 11th of December uh, 2017 uh, as, a, as a material consideration for the parameters to take on board. So I'm minded to treat it, if members will allow me, as a material consideration. And it says specifically that if the site is to be disposed of, an alternative provision should be made. What the inspector said in his appeal of 2016 is that he didn't have evidence in front of him to allow, to, uh, allow the, uh, to refuse the appeal um, on the grounds of play and pitch. Um, so I think it refers to our previous play and pitch strategy of 2004. Um, and he says that wasn't sufficient evidence. Well, we have, if you like, a different evidence base now. Um, members may feel that's flimsy. Um, I personally feel it's, it's important that we've adopted as a council um, it's out for, as a material planning consideration, a playing pitch strategy that refers directly now into the planning policy framework, and it's replaced the 2004 one um, 
which, which clearly didn't, uh, and therefore was useless at that period, um, then we, uh, we, we could possibly um, uh, chancel our own refusal um, on, on those grounds. The principle of development, and I'm sorry if I disappoint a lot of councillors, the principle of development on the site is a given. I think that's, that's um, uh, we have the extent, the extent. Um, outline permission, the density argument, as Stephen suggested, would have gone out of the world, that will attack the engineer has been cleared by the traffic movement. However, develop a contribution as per our material considerations, I think it's still one that we can place front and centre and, um, and, and require from the developer a contribution to bring up to standard um, uh, other plain, plain pictures to come to to compensate, if you like, for the loss uh, of this land. If, if that does find favour, I don't know what order we wish to take it in, I do have potential where to refusal uh, on those uh, those grounds. Okay, can I just ask uh, for clarification that one of those uh, playing fields will not
uh, of the likelihood of reuse as a playing field. So it seems to me that this issue of um, playing pitch provision is still very much a live one because the submission from Sports England seems to indicate that the inspector wasn't given the relevant evidence to make an appropriate judgment. And on top of that, we have a revised strategy since the inspector's decision was made. So I think they are kind of very relevant observations in terms of um, in terms of the overall application. Thank you, Pat. George? Just, um, just to clarify one of the things you just mentioned, Chair, um, in the year it was 2000, uh, I was on Leslie Services, I remember it very well, uh, and they moved Galladian Football Club down to Under Bridge, down to the end that was there, with an assurance from Andy Williamson, who was the director at the time, that they could use that facility until a railway station was put in that place, which is still has not been done, but that was something that was there on, on the cards in, in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. and very well indeed. Um, I think some of the, the points that have been made, and I think Pat's just made the points as well, I mean, one of the things that could, could be looked at, you know, is, is the, I don't think you talk about the houses and the density and the other thing, but all that is, you know, we, we lose it hands down. Um, but the, the other thing is that um, there is a Petten Rugby Club, which is only two streets down, if you like, from Petten Dow Road, which is possible. They are looking for this type of thing, and they also want the local clubs, like Glenavon, for example, to use their facilities. So there is a facility, or there could be a facility, that they could actually apply for to get that type of uh, pitch. For, for that area, for the case. Does anybody want to speak on this before I go back to Stuart? Adrian. Yeah, I just have to say how depressing it is to have to listen to this sort of thing. We are prisoners of housing policy and we are prisoners of the um, beyond our decision making. We obviously need more housing, but in particular we need genuinely affordable housing, not only to buy but also to rent. Uh, this de development, as far as I can see, fails in that respect. But what everybody seems to be saying is that there's no point in uh, refusing, as we are pretty confident that to refuse will mean an appeal will uh, win, and the, the, the loser will then be the residents who we all represent, who will then have to pay the costs of war against us uh, against the appeal. What we need is a decent and a proper national housing policy, but as long as we're the prisoners of this sort of thing, uh, I don't see how we can uh, re reject it. The, the cost of that falling on our uh, council taxpayers. Thanks, Adrian. Could you turn the microphone up, please? Thanks. 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 Okay, so somebody else wanted to talk to Stuart, somebody who got... Yeah, I mean, if I, if I could just pick up uh, Adrian's point about costs, because I, I think it's an important one, and was all not to be overly <laughs> frightened of, of costs. Um, costs will only tend to be rewarded against the council um, if, if it is acted uh, demonstrably unreasonably um, and, um, and hasn't backed its argument with, um, with policy. There was a recent one. Uh, where, where the inspector took the view that we didn't have robust enough policy and water costs in general. And in terms of we'll reach later, some appeals we've done, some we've lost. Um, and, I, and I would wager that, that uh, even when an application for costs has been made by the applicant, 
but the inspector was were, were, were entitled to take a certain view and um, just because he disagrees, he or she, the inspector disagrees, um, there is no reason necessarily to award costs against us. Um, nothing to give these you know, inspectors can do as you want to play, um, but in, in, in general they tend to be reasonable on that. Uh, here we so, 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 so. I do, I do challenge you sometimes. You, you speak as though you're, you're giving us advice. Yes, I, 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 I would like the advice of yeah, um, the appointed um, officer rather than your. Okay. Can you I make a couple more? Like the envelope calculation. Can I make a couple of fair observations then? I'm not just going to challenge me or what I hear. I hear what Councillor Davis says about Frank Lumpy Club as another possible uh, beneficiary of I only quote directly from the strategy, and the strategy identified uh, the Glen and the Sully um, as, as areas where um, the, the, the could potentially benefit from a developer obligation as required by the National Park um, Authority framework. Um, clearly, other options are brought forward by the developers to meet their obligation, um, then, then I would be happy, uh, certainly happy uh, with that. Chair, did, did, did you always pause before moving my reasons for refusal so that officers can respond to Steve? Um, I did actually see Sam's hand go up as well, so I'll, I'll probably go back to Sam if I may. Um, if, do the officers want to actually take up any of those points? In terms of whether it would be water costs, I don't know. All I can say is there was. Um, an extent outline plan commission for residential development, development on the site. Um, a financial viability assessment has been undertaken and can provide the six border houses on the site, which is what we would negotiate normally, um, with no additional monies available for plain fee provision or cost towards it. Um, and it is accepted that the more recent plain fixed strategy did come after the appeal decision, where it's considered that affordable housing provision is an important element of this proposal. Okay, Sam, did you want to speak? Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I guess, speaking quite frankly, as a, as a new member of the planning committee, this does feel like a very, very difficult application that's been put in front of us. And I, I do, to an extent, feel like the, the fact that it's been overturned previously does almost um, put us in quite a bind here. From, from what I can hear from the conversations going on around the table, please correct me as, as a new member, I'm incorrect. But this application has been overturned once before with more houses, so there would have been the same amount of space but a, a, a more significant level of development. Um, and if it is overturned on appeal, then our ability as the planning committee to suggest the level of affordable housing does get taken away. So we, we, are, we would be at risk of losing 20% affordable housing. However, on the other hand, what we have in front of us is a development which could one day become a playing field, which I think most people in the room would probably gladly see happen and also has a level of development and access that some of us do have questions around. But there is, there is a, real, a real feeling of frustration for myself, at least, that, that our, our hands are always being tied and that there's, there's a fear, I think, that it's overturned and that we have even less say on what this development could look like, given the previous history, um, and given that there are limited and um, limited sound planning reasons uh, for this committee to look forward to looking for refusal. So um, it, it's more of a comment than a question, but I do, I do really feel like this the fact that it's been over before does put us in a very difficult position of planning. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so if there isn't anybody else, I'll go back to Stuart then. If you want to move. I'll go straight into the appeal, please. Please, um, The application has been refused uh, for the following reason. The Wimble Plain Pitch Strategy, adopted by the Council as a material consideration in December 2017, indicates that the site should be protected or an equivalent in a suitable location. As no replacement provision has been proposed by the applicants, as required by paragraph 97B of the National Planning Policy Framework, the development proposed is considered to be contrary to proposal RE6 of the Willow Unity Development Plan and the principles of the National Planning Policy Framework. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Do we have any I was a question, just a quick question to the officers. Given that the previous application, when submitted, was refused and there was a, a solid offer of replacement, irrespective of that policy, would that have any bearing on the outcome of the decision? That, that's a, a, a 
decision. I, I think it's, it's hard to predict the, um, what, what an inspector will take into account. But it is a material planning consideration upon which the, the, um, the committee would, could make a decision. So. Okay, do we have a second to put up refusal to be passed? Can I uh, ask for those who are in favour of refusal? Can I have a show of hands, please? Are those against? Okay, thank you. That, that's lost. Um, I, th I do think it's very disappointing that we haven't got Playing strategy, uh, play fields attached to this, and it is withdrawn uh, based on the original application. I'm very disappointed about that. However, the officer's recommendation um, to approve this, um, subject to the conditions listed and also the condition on placement. All those are the conditions. And this will have to be referred to the Secretary of State for final approval. Um, all those in favour of approval? Oh, sorry, I do apologise. Can I have a move for that, please? Do we have a move for that, please? Catherine, and do you have a seconder? David, all those in favour of approval? Subject to conditions listed, late list, and referral to the Secretary of State. Those against? Okay, that application is carried. to agenda item 8, which is pages 37 to 42 yeah. in your packets. Um, if you could move to those pages, please, if we have a presentation. Thank you, Chair. Um, this application is in connection with two stories attached to one house and a garage. The first house will be built on land to the west of Two Don Avenue, which is called the Arlington's property. The house would sit within the plot with its main aspect west and north, with its private garden to the west of the plot. All normal interface distances are met or exceeded in respect of the surrounding properties. The dwelling would have a garage or street parking within the site. The existing access to Two Don Avenue would remain wide to accommodate the driveway. This would not reduce the size of the turning head or the access to all the properties. The site is covered by a blanket tree preservation order which extends to Bickerton Court to the rear. Four trees would be removed as a result of the development. One of these is dead and two of these are classed as poor. The remaining tree was dominant the garden as proposed for the dwelling. Um, a landscaping addition is proposed and will ensure that replacement trees are provided at the main site and around the site. The design and scale of the dwelling is set to replicate those in the surrounding area and it's found to fit in with the surrounding properties and is recommended for approval of the basis. Thank you. Uh, we don't have a qualified petition for this and it was subject to um, a site. Is there a council that wants to speak on this? Would you like to come forward, please? If you could just state the name of the council. Thank you. Thank you. Such as this one, 
that forms part of the estate. The residents feel that they've lost this right for what they thought would be a garden, but instead the land was never used as a garden, but as a general dumping ground and storage space, often with the grass growing wild, depriving name, uh, neighbours of a beautiful green space. The further loss of, the, of this land to a building or a property would be a step too far in many residents' opinion. Residents also have concerns about the loss of the trees, couldn't be covered by the tree protection orders, and although the context states that two of the trees are of low value, uh, they are surely of more value than the Surely established trees are of higher ecological value than the proposed newly planted trees. The residents are also concerned about the potential of bats in the area having witnessed uh, bats uh, flying themselves and question whether adequate survey work has been carried out to ensure the protection of any bats currently in this area. For the reasons stated, I call upon the committee to reject this proposal. Thank you very much. Um, can I just uh, have an answer to the question we've got in the back? Thank you, Chair. Um, a fact which the survey was carried out on the site, and that checked the trees on site to see if they were suitable for reducing the potential for bats, and concluded that there was no boosting potential for bats. So, no further survey was carried out. Thank you. Can uh, I put this up to the committee, please? Thank you. One of the points that I would like to make uh, is that uh, on page 39 under appearance of immunity, the third paragraph, it does say that the dwelling has a detached garage and a driveway which could accommodate two cars. So um, I just wanted to point that out based on what has been said previously. Okay, if nobody's. Mary? Yeah, I am worried about the car park and as I pointed out on uh, Tuesday, the site is. Um, the car the bus, not the floor we were being able to get into that driveway. Uh, and, and that's it's a very narrow course and it only needs a visitor to the house to block off the driveway. Uh, I had to park up the road and I think that to give me access and ingress to other driveways. Um, I, I am concerned in that the, a four bedroom house as we say will have these two cars in front of that same garage. So this is going to spill out onto the road and there's just not enough space to turn around. Okay, thank you. Are there any other points, Kathy? Chair, let me see a picture of the house.
Thanks, Kathy. I think mean, we did hear from the officer that of the trees, one was dead, two were in poor condition, and certainly when we went on the site visit, the, the tree, the, the tree is going to have to be removed, certainly dominated that piece of land. But I think my initial reaction when I got to the plot was, wow, how are they going to build a house on here? But, you know, looking and taking into consideration that that tree can be removed, I could see that house could be built on, on that piece of land. Um, just a very quick one, really. Can we just see a side plan showing the house on the plot as opposed to a <coughs> side plan showing the area of the I think it's clear from that that the house does take a large proportion of the plot, leaving very little amenity space alongside it. That's my only comment that I wish to make at this time. Chair, through you. Um, the, the, the green ring to the rear of the house, is that the tree, one of the four that is going to be remaining? Because it, it looks very close. That's not going to happen. That's to be removed, is it? Thank you, Kathy. Sam? Thank you, Chair. This was just a point of clarification um, around the question of parking on the driveway. My understanding from the site was it was the driveway just to the extent that so that um, any, any, any residents or visitors to the new park house wouldn't actually be blocking the existing one. So could, could you just clarify on that, please? Through you, Chair. Um, if we look at the map, the, this is the area of the new driveway, um, and this extends over to this part of the site. So the turn head has not changed in size. The access to these properties remains the same, and to this property remains the same. There is a, a garage, a space in front of the garage, and there's probably even space for two cars in front of the garage at this morning to park on this side. Thank you. Okay, anybody else with any questions? Okay, can I uh, ask it as a mover, please? Obviously, now we're going to move reasons for the refusal. I think we did see on the site that was capable of getting two cars on the site, one in the garage and one on the drive. That seems to be a major issue. I think um, the site has proved it is possible. Not ideal application, but in the absence of the removal reasons for refusal on those approval with conditions. Okay. I've got Chair, I've got the Chair, I've got Hang on a second, please, and need some clarification because we haven't got a move of uh, approval on that. Yeah, I, I think it, we, we have got, we, it has been moved. Yeah. Uh, I did give up opportunity for a reason for the case. Yeah, I think that you know, if it's been moved, it should, we should now move to a, a, a second uh, and take notes on that. And then, because uh, if you have to do it if you use or before, it, 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 it would be moved. So we have a, a move. Do we have a seconder, Tony? All those in favour of approval, subject to the conditions listed. Those against? Okay, that is carried. Thank you. If we can now move to agenda item 9, please, which is pages 43 to 48, which is the paper down to the rear of 240 to 240B, Boxy Village. And we'll have a presentation, please. Thank you, Chair. The definition is the erection of two bungalows on land to the rear of 240 Boxy Village. The land is currently open and overgrown. Um, and it takes up access from adjacent to 240 Wallace Village on the side of property. This access also serves Anna Cottage, a relatively new dwelling also to the rear of 240 Wallace Village. The site is within a primarily residential area and proposal should be against, assessed against HS4 and HS10, which are the general housing policies and the background housing policies. 
HS4 requires development not to come under character of the area or the amenities of existing properties. HS10 sets out the criteria for pathland development in terms of the access to development, plot sizes, distances. Um, according to HS10, up to three dwellings can be permitted from a private drive. With Anchor Cottage, the development would constitute three properties using the access off Policy Village. The first section of the access up to Anchor Cottage is limited in width, but it's over three metres wide, and it widens out to extend into the application site to provide turning space and parking. The limited height and profile of the bungalows on the site and the satisfactory interface distance for existing properties will mitigate the impact of the development on these properties. And it's not considered that there will be an adverse impact on adjacent properties. Uh, a back roof survey was carried out in July to the trees on the site which is being removed to facilitate the bungalows. It found no evidence of bats in the trees or potential evidence of back roofs in the trees. It's considered that the proposals comply with HS10 and HS4 and it is recommended for approval. Uh, there is a qualified position. Thank you, Sheila. Is there, um, does the petition want to speak on this? Okay, the Water Council, so let's come forward. Or it's taking us along to get to you. If you could just state your name for the record, please. Thanks, Sheriff. Paul Hayes, one of the councillors for Wallace Ward. I have actually got a, a photograph of what we uh, determined to be a fact. If I can just pass that around the committee and then obviously I'll speak to that later on in my submissions if that's been received. Yeah, that's fine. on this application this evening and thanks also to members who were able to make the site visit on Tuesday. I and the residents behind me, the residents of Walsh Village are very grateful that you took the time to see the site for yourselves and I hope you find it very useful in your deliberations this evening. I did note at the visit that uh, the vehicle conveying members did not enter the site via the access road. Now I'm not sure whether that was attempted at all by your driver but no doubt members would have seen with their own eyes that it would have been impossible for that vehicle to access the site in this way from Wallasey Village. Just for uh, clarification, the access is 3.2 metres wide, whereas it is advised normally that there should be a minimum width of 5 metres. There's obviously been a lot of debate at this committee in previous application in terms of access and members did feel 5.5 was perhaps too little. Here we have an access of 3.2 metres in width. Uh, this is an extremely busy part of Wallasey with vehicles parked all the way along Wallasey Village Shore and most of the day, meaning vehicles entering and exiting from Green Lane, the Lighthouse Pub Car Park and this small access road have close to zero park visibility and often take their lives into their own hands when manoeuvring their vehicle to join the flow of traffic on Wallasey Village. And funny enough, uh, Chair, I do actually speak about this from personal experience as a few years ago, I myself was involved in an accident when a vehicle exiting the lighthouse pub car park by its access road, which is considerably wider to the one on this site, hit the side of my vehicle. Members, it's clear to me and residents who took the time to petition against this application that the access road here is quite simply deficient, and the addition of two further dwellings on this site, meaning two times as many vehicle movements, if not more, will make this section of highway too dangerous to navigate for pedestrians, car users and indeed emergency vehicles. I would like to bring members' attention to the pre